This is intramembranous ossification, which is bone development. So we're discussing just this type. In a previous video, we briefly compared the difference between intramembranous and endochondral ossification. Remember, this is bone development, and we're taking one tissue and turning it into another. We see that throughout the course of our body in different parts, that things change and specialize. That's differentiation. Our body has the ability to change from one cell to the next for the purpose of creating some type of product. In this case, it's bone. When we talk about intramembranous ossification, it's in between membrane bones, dermal bones. We discussed that it's part of like the mandible, some of my bones of my cranium, my clavicle. These are dermal bones that I can feel right through my skin. How they develop is starting with mesenchymal tissue. So in the previous video, we looked at the same pictures, but it's good to highlight what's happening here, that this picture is describing this picture. And it's a point in time of the development, but essentially we have mesenchymal tissue, which is our basic stem cells. So what is mesenchymal tissue? It's our stem cells, our basic embryonic tissue for which all connective tissue arises. In other words, mesenchymal tissue can turn into other types of tissue just besides bone or cartilage. It could turn into things like connective tissue proper, dense, and loose. So as we describe this, we're specifically looking how do we form our two types of osseous tissue. Remember that's spongy and compact bone. So what are our two types of osseous tissue? spongy and compact bone but we got to get to that point we got to be able to develop it and then they got to grow so how they develop is through intramembranous ossification when we talk about our dermal bones so we start here with a sheet of mesenchymal tissue and a sheet of mesenchymal tissue and we're bringing in blood supply remember one of our functions of bone is blood formation but it's also heavily used for the development of bone to bring in the supplies we need for it to develop and that's why i think a bone development is bringing in the supplies and then it can grow so we start with mesenchymal tissue and usually two sheets of it to where the mesenchymal cells are migrating, but they start to change or differentiate into osteoblasts. Remember, you also have osteoprogenitor cells, which are then the stem cells of bone. So depending on the text, sometimes mesenchymal will turn into osteoprogenitor, and then osteoblasts, you'll see some texts that'll say it'll go straight for mesenchymal and skip osteoprogenitor straight to osteoblasts, but you still have the presence of osteoprogenitor cells. Those are the stem cells for bone itself. So we go from mesenchymal to blast. Remember, baby cells for the bead blasts are the ones secreting the matrix because we know that majority of the bone is actually what the cells are secreting, which is the matrix that includes our protein fibers, primarily collagen fibers, because we have three types. You remember those three types? Collagen, elastic, and reticular. Collagen is for our strength, so we use it for bone, and it's the most abundant fibers. So osteoblasts are secreting the matrix of collagen fibers, but then also includes that osteoid, that compound that creates the ground substance. And we start to mineralize the bone, and we do that through calcium. So calcification occurs as well to give us the mass, that hardened material, which is calcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, primarily. So that was a lot to say just what's going on with osteoblasts. But mesenchymal cells differentiate and turn into osteoblasts to actually secrete the matrix. Remember, this is occurring within now this purple area because this is the start development of bone, specifically spongy bone. So those osteoblasts will continue to secrete the matrix. Remember, as they get older, they turn into osteocytes and they tend to form a little bubble around them called a lacunae. So osteoblasts turn into osteocytes to help maintain the tissue. Once I have these cells, I'm creating that product, and we call this spicules or trabeculae. Spicules is a basic little branch that starts, and as it all branches together like a tree, it becomes trabeculae. So if I just took little pieces of this in segments, like this is a spicule that combines with a spicule. Here's another little strut here, a spicule, and it just starts forming all together, which is called trabeculae. So you might use those terms interchangeably in some texts. Spicules turn into trabeculae. Once I have that final branching, now I can start to form my two tops, types of osseous tissue, spongy, and then it could continue to develop and turn into compact bone depending on where we're at in the bone and what type of bone it is. 
So it's just the basic steps, but it, the key is understanding that it's the, the change that we are replacing one type of tissue, mesenchymal tissue, and with our blood supply to bring in the actual cells that'll turn into the bone making process of intramembrous ossification. So as soon as I see the difference between the two from intramembranous, I just see two sheets of tissue versus when we look at endochondral. Endochondral ossification is our next video and that's seeing hyaline cartilage. So when we compare the two slides, I'm really just looking for the bubbling of cartilage cells that we'll look at in the next video. This is intramembranous ossification.